So it can be difficult to come up with new ideas when you're faced with a blank page, but what you can do is make lots of simple objects very complicated quickly and make them make all kinds of interesting shapes and then select the ones that seem interesting and have potential and just you know keep the rest for later. So let me show you how I go about doing that. Sorry about the seagulls and the poor quality microphone. I'm using the mic from my PlayStation because my main one's broken, but I hope you can make me out. So I took a basic sphere, selected all the faces, and inset by polygon, and created this lattice, which you can then mesh smooth to give it an organic look. By changing the settings on mesh smooth, you can make it look more like a Buckminster Fuller dome. This time I didn't delete the inset faces, but extruded them to create this uh, thing that looks a bit like a, like a virus or some pollen under a microscope, maybe uh, some kind of space monster. I love how quickly you can create these very mathematical, complicated shapes. Then by optimizing them down again, you can simplify them and make them into these more crystalline lattices. You can use shell modifier to make the 2D surface a 3D object. Makes it more chunky. And then you can chamfer it and mesh move it. You can also go down the modifier stack to the number of segments of the sphere and change that number. And that creates all kinds of really strange mutations. It's another virusy one. We'll have a look at these more closely in a minute. They're really awesome inside. Mesh smooth to give it some more complexity. Pro optimize down to what 20%. Gives you this strange quasi periodic tiling. This kind of disorderly order is normally quite hard to get in 3D software. It makes it look almost like a machine planet or something. Something cool. This crazy mutation is when they change the segment number on the geosphere, and so is this one. And sometimes these are just really bizarre. I love these. Really cool looking. Whoa. And you don't have to delete the inset phases, you can delete everything else and just leave them. Delete all the connecting tissue. Select a few at random using the selection tool. We'll come back to that in a sec, actually. And then you can mess around with these forms, just seeing what looks cool. Looks like Sonic the Hedgehog. Optimize it back down again to make it crystallize. And each one of these is similar but different. It's again something difficult to achieve in 3D usually. You could use this as the uh, emitter geometry for a particle field or array. So perhaps you could have lots of little particles appearing on the surface of this object and actually make the object invisible to the camera and they would seem to be just appearing in this swirling uh, formation. Maybe useful for modeling a, like a hurricane, something like that. You can do the same exact thing with a box and uh, just extrude these faces and inset them, see what happens. If you make ten of these, I guarantee that three or four will seem you know interesting enough to keep going with. It's just a way of generating ideas automatically. 
so we have this like an inflatable thing. So maybe you want to make a sort of lattice shape that looks a bit like a, a building under construction or a space station or something. Changing the settings of the mesh smooth modifier can give you this more mechanical beveled edge look or more organic. What about a spaceship? Just a box with a pointy bit on front. Mesh smooth it off, optimize down the number of faces. And then uh, inset. Mesh smooth it and you create this very complicated object. So let's have a look at what we've made. This thing looks like pollen, some kind of alien machine maybe, maybe a planet. I don't know, it looks like Satan's dick, it's crazy. Very alien, weird looking. I like this one. It's like some kind of crazy space cathedral or something. So beautiful. And this has all just come out of just a few mathematical operations. So much complexity from something that was so simple. So this could be this frame of a house or, you know, a space station under construction. Start adding textures to this, other details. Maybe make 20 copies and put them all in an array. And after a you know, very short amount of time, you've got some very complicated, interesting looking objects. This is cool. I like this. I might make this into a spaceship or something. And I would have no way of modeling this. Otherwise, I have no idea how to put all of this together, but letting it do it by itself automatically, you create all of this stuff. Look at that, that's awesome. And you could mesh smooth this more if you wanted to, or, you know, twist the whole object, add other bits, colors. This is just the start, but it's just a way of generating sort of things to, to work on. So let's have a look at how I built the image for my main picture. I want to make a sort of cylindrical spaceship guild highliner from the Dune series. So if you make a cylinder, cut the ends off, mesh smooth it to give it lots of faces, and then optimize those faces down in a way that looks interesting. I think 54.8% we create this lovely quasi-periodic tiling. I'm not really sure why it makes this pattern. I guess it's a bit like how you, when you draw a circle on a pixelated screen, if you look quite close, it's sawtooth edges, I'm not sure, creates this very interesting crisscross pattern. It doesn't repeat, it's not regular, but it's got this kind of you know, rhythm to it. It's really nice, I like that a lot. So I'm going to use that as the surface of my spaceship. This is the ship, added a few more bits and did the same process to them. Bit of mesh smooth, bit of optimize, bit of lattice, uh, sorry, bit of extrude and inset. Yeah, I really like this surface texture. I think it's really nice. Meant to show kind of order, but also an organic feel. The object is very heavy, which is why I can't show you the process in real time. I had to just take some screen caps. It's the only issue with a big object like this. I wanted to make it look enormous. Lots of detail relative to the overall size, with small kind of widely distributed details, and uh, to make it look enormous. 
by the way, that that's an, as a side note, that's how you make a ship look huge. It's a bit like how you can tell the difference between a baby elephant and an adult elephant. You know, the baby elephant's eyes are very big, and all its facial features are very large relative to the size of its face, whereas the adult, the eyes are mu relatively much smaller. They're spread out. All the features spread out. And on the ship, you know, the a giant ship, the windows will be tiny and far apart. On a small ship, they'll be much bigger, like the eyes. And there it is. There's my guild highliner. A bit of Photoshop, and uh, we're done. So a whole house navy can fit onto the forecourt of the ship, and everyone else, all the plebs, go inside. And then you travel from one star system to another inside it. The guild holds a monopoly on star travel, so you've got to use their service. And whatever they demand that you pay, you have to pay it. So thanks for watching. Oh, one other thing. The Pro Optimize isn't the only way of breaking up the surface. You can use uh, another set of tools. So we used selection before. I remember I said to come back to this. So we can select faces uh, using different functions. For example, at random, just based on a percentage. So this is selecting 25% of the faces. And you can just push it again to select a different 25%, or you can change it so that you're selecting 25% of that first selection. So let's put this to use. Make a much higher number of faces and go to poly modeling. Got to go to edit poly first for it to activate. And then generate topology. And it opens this drop down. And each of these is a little operation that will break up the surface into these tilings. Useful, huh? You can use these to make bricks or rather than using textures, you can use these geometric functions. And then you can bake them into normal maps if the object is getting heavy. So let's do something with those two tools. Let's select some faces at random. It's 25% of the whole faces selected. Let's extrude them. Now you can change the number of faces selected at this point. Well, this stage in the process and you can change the uh, the layout so if you don't like how the selection has been made you can make a different one that looks fine to me so from that selection I now want to select a subset at random and then extrude those more it's starting to look a bit like a city let's do the same thing again Extrude 25% of that, 25%. And this roughly mimics how the buildings of a city, the taller they are, the fewer there are of them. It's already looking quite city-like. Usually the buildings of a city conform to the blocks that they're on, and they are conform you know, uh, what's the word? constrained by the roads around them, so you get these kind of straight lines at angles to each other, and the buildings tend to reflect that. But not all buildings are squares and boxes, so let's just make them a little bit more complicated.
You can see why I split it up, because most of my time is spent faffing around trying to find buttons and changing my mind about things. But that's the beauty, I guess, is that you can try different stuff and see what happens. So I selected a random grouping of these buildings by face and then grew the amount of selection around that face by a couple of uh, surrounding faces and then just mesh smoothed that selection and some of the buildings now have a bevel. Already that starts to feel more realistic to me. And there you have it. Hope that was useful. Thanks very much for watching. My name's been Alex J. Brady. Uh, find me on Instagram. Peace.